Hello beautiful people of the internet, how are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today in this video I will be talking about all of the books that I read in the month of September 2019. So this month I read five books and one novella which is a lot for me. Usually I average about three or four books a month but because some of these works were on the shorter side I think I'm pretty average in page count for this month. I read 1,314 pages for an average star rating of 4.3 stars. So I really liked everything that I read this month, though some of the things that I read were rereads because I am taking a Jane Austen class where I had to reread a book that I already read before and a Shakespeare class where both plays that I read this month I'd already read before. So I don't know how much I'm gonna have to say about those, but let's just get right into the video. So the first book that I read this month was for Shakespeare class and that was a reread for me of Romeo and Juliet, which I gave four stars. Romeo and Juliet, I think everyone knows what this play is about, even if you haven't read it. It's about a boy who meets a girl. They're from rival families. They fall in love and then they both die at the end. It's not a spoiler alert. Everybody in our society knows that and even if you didn't somehow, they tell you at the very beginning of the play that they're both going to die at the end. To be completely honest, when I read Romeo and Juliet for the first time as a freshman in high school, I didn't like it that much. And I think that's because our society paints Romeo and Juliet as this really romantic love story. And to be completely honest, I don't think it's that romantic. It's a teenage boy and a 13 year old girl who meet each other and in the course of one weekend meet, fall in love at first sight, get married and die due to their own stupidity. So I don't really think it is very romantic. However, upon rereading I increased my rating to four stars because there is a lot of interesting stuff going on here even if I don't think it's this amazingly romantic story that society says it is. It still has an interesting plot, it still has some really good lines and some interesting characters. I know Mercutio is a favorite in my class, he's definitely funny, and even though this is not my favorite Shakespeare play, I can't deny that it is well written and that it has an amazing societal impact, so that's why I decided to increase my rating to four stars. The next thing that I read in the month of September was a novella and that was The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn which I gave four stars. So The Grown Up is a novella that was originally published in George R. R. Martin's Rogues anthology under the title What Do You Do? However it has since been published by itself as its own book which is why I'm talking about it in this wrap up. I really enjoyed this. It follows a main character who is a sort of con, art con artist and grifter who she does fortune telling and palm reading for a living and then she meets this woman who says that there is something very wrong with her stepson and she wants the main character to come try to help him because she believes that her stepson has been possessed by some sort of evil entity or force at their new house and she wants the main character to do some sort of cleansing. I did really enjoy this. I was hooked from the very first line. I was trying to find something to read on my Libby app and when I opened the preview of this novella and I read the very first line, I knew I had to keep reading it because the first line of The Grown Up is, I didn't stop giving hand jobs because I wasn't good at it. I stopped giving hand jobs because I was the best at it. And if that first line doesn't make you just want to know what the hell is going on, I don't know what will. I did really like The Grown Up and I thought there were some interesting twists and turns in the plot, but I was kind of disappointed with it because since it's a novella it ended so abruptly there really isn't a concrete answer at the end of this novella and I would have liked to see it be a little longer, maybe to have some more explanations, some more solid answers because while I really enjoyed what I read. I just wish that there had been more, that there had been more that was done with this story because it has some really interesting stuff, it's just over all too quickly. So the next thing that I read in September was I think my favorite thing that I read all month and possibly one of my new favorite mysteries or thrillers of all time because it was mind-blowingly good and that was The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson which I gave five stars. So on a flight from London to Boston, our main character Ted meets Lily and Ted and Lily begin talking about their lives. Ted has recently discovered that his wife Miranda is cheating on him and he confesses to Lily that he thinks his life would be so much easier if Miranda was dead. So Lily says she'll help him kill his wife if he wants and the story goes from there. I 
don't want to say too much about this book because there were so many twists and turns and things that I was not expecting that I kind of feel like I want to tell you barely anything about it so that if you decide to read it you can just go in knowing the basic premise and that's it and hopefully have the same amazing surprises in store that I had. Find Worth Killing has multiple perspectives and it's really interesting to see how the story unfolds. There are lots of twists and turns in store and even though this book did have a bit of an open ending, I actually really, really liked it. I thought it really worked well for this book and it was just a great way to end the story. This book has a plot twist that was one of the most shocking that I've read in a while. It was so shocking to me that I just stared at the copy on my uh, Libby app because I got this as an ebook. I just didn't know how to process what had just happened. And in fact, I had to turn to my flatmate Oh, look at me saying flatmate. England's really wearing off on me. I had to turn to my flatmate, roommate, whatever you want to call it, and basically explain to her what had just happened because I was so shocked. My mind was so blown that I just had to talk to somebody about it. I thought this book was wonderful. Like it just it just blew my mind. I don't know how else to describe it. I will say that the main character is not, like Ted is not really, I didn't like him at all. I don't think I'm supposed to like him. And there was like this just one throwaway line that kind of, I wouldn't say it didn't bother me that much where the author, he's, Ted is on a college campus and he refers to the scrubbed faced young feminists. And I'm just like, you know, some feminists do like to wear makeup, you know? <laughs> it's okay to be a feminine. Like, that that line just bothered me a little bit, but it, it was just, that was the one thing that kind of annoyed me a little bit. It's not like I felt like the book as a whole was very problematic. It was just that one throwaway line. I was like, hmm, I'm a feminist and I wear makeup. The next thing that I read was for my Jane Austen class, and that was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. This was actually published after Jane Austen had died, but it was the first or one of the first novels that she ever wrote. So Northanger Abbey actually takes place partially in Bath where I'm studying. So it was really cool to read this and to know the different places that they're talking about, you know, talking about Pultani Street where I know that where that is or talking about the characters going to the pump room restaurant, which I know where that is. So this follows Catherine Moreland and Catherine gets to go to Bath with a chaperone. And while she's in Bath, she meets the Tilney family and she becomes enamored with their son Henry. She is invited to go to the Tilney family home of Northanger Abbey and Catherine who is obsessed with gothic novels becomes convinced that there must be something mysterious and sinister afoot at this old estate. I gave Northanger Abbey four stars. I did enjoy it. However, in terms of the three Jane Austens that I've read so far, I think this is probably my least favorite. I am going to be doing an entire vlog where I read every Jane Austen novel because I am reading every single one of her novels in class this semester. So I will share more of my thoughts in that vlog when it eventually goes up. But I think the problem that I have with this is that because it is so short, it's more of a, I guess it's more of a novella length. There actually is a couple other short stories and unfinished works in this book because Northanger Abbey is, I think, less than 200 pages. And I feel like it could have benefited from being longer and having more development. I also really hate Henry Tilney. I was very disappointed by his character because I know there's that subsection of the Jane Austen fandom on Tumblr who just love Henry Tilney and say that he's the greatest ever and that he's their favorite Jane Austen love interest. So I went into this book having such high expectations about Henry Tilney, expecting to love Henry Tilney, and I just found him condescending and kind of sexist. So the romance in this book not one of my favorites by any means. I did enjoy it. It was still a Jane Austen novel. It was still typical Jane Austen humor. I thought Catherine was a good main character. It just wasn't as good as some of her other stuff. So if you've never read Jane Austen before, I would not recommend this one to start with. 
The next was another reread, and that was Beth by William Shakespeare. This is my favorite Shakespeare play out of all the ones that I've read so far, so no surprise that I once again gave it five stars. Beth is a tragedy set in 11th century Scotland. It is based on real historical people, however the events of this play are highly fictionalized. So our title character Macbeth receives a prophecy from three witches that he will become king of Scotland. And so he and his wife Lady Macbeth devise a plan to murder the king so that Macbeth can assume the throne, and things spiral horribly out of control from there. This is my favorite Shakespeare play out of all the ones I've read so far. It is also one of his shortest plays, so if you're not someone who reads a lot of Shakespeare or reads a lot of classics, I think this is a good one to get into. Do not have Hamlet be your first Shakespeare play because Hamlet is a trip. I think this one is definitely a little more accessible because it is quicker to read and I think it has a really interesting plot. I also for some reason just have this obsession with Lady Macbeth and I don't know exactly why this is because clearly she's not a good person. She really wants to be queen, she's really ambitious, and she's convincing her husband the need to commit murder. But something about her just is so fascinating to me. I mean Macbeth, not a great person and also he's he's uh, a little wishy-washy. <laughs> Which, this sounds terrible. I'm like, he's wishy-washy in committing murder, so I don't like him. <laughs> this video is going off the rails. I don't know, there's just something about Lady Macbeth where she's not a good person, but she's just a really cool character, and I think she's kind of badass in an evil way. Like, I don't, I don't condone her actions, but I love reading about her. I actually had to read the part of Lady Macbeth in senior year high school English class, which is a little awkward for me because I'm a very introverted person who doesn't like reading in front of the class, and here I was reading speeches, asking evil spirits to unsex me, and saying that I would rip a baby from my breast and bash its brains against the wall if Macbeth told me to. That was a little awkward. So, in conclusion, I love this play. It's my favorite. I would recommend it if you haven't read it yet and you're interested in reading Shakespeare. Five stars. There you go. <laughs> so the last book that I read in September, and thank god this video is almost over because it's going off the rails. I don't know what I'm saying. This is one of the worst videos I've ever made. But the last book that I read in September was Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I decided to give this four stars. Sense and Sensibility was the first of Jane Austen's novels to be published. It follows two sisters, Eleanor and Marianne. After their father dies, their brother kicks them and their mother and their younger sister out of the family home. The older sister, Eleanor, is much more sensible and she begins to develop feelings for Edward Ferris, who is the brother of their sister-in-law. So their sister-in-law, the woman married to their brother, her brother is Edward. Meanwhile, Marianne, the younger sister, is much more naive, much more open with her feelings, and she develops an infatuation with this man named John Willoughby. Meanwhile, the much older Colonel Brandon is also in love with Marianne, so it follows these two sisters and their romantic entanglement. I have to say, I enjoyed this book much more upon reread. The first time that I read it, I thought it was okay, but it definitely wasn't one of my favorite books, and I think the second time I read it, I definitely appreciated it a lot more. I definitely found myself laughing during certain parts. I think Jane Austen is so funny, and that's a thing that a lot of people don't know if they haven't read her before. She just has this great wit and this great social commentary, so there were a lot of little moments in here that I really did like. I do like Eleanor and Marianne. I don't think they're my favorite out of Jane Austen heroines. I really like Colonel Brandon a lot. I think he's definitely my favorite character in this book. I think Willoughby is really interesting as a character. I don't like him, but I think he is very, very interesting. And Edward, I don't dislike him, but to be honest, I find him a little boring. <laughs> so overall, I don't have a huge 
attachment to any of the characters in this book and the romances are not some of my favorites so I wouldn't say I actively dislike any of them but I'm also not rooting for any of them very strongly either. I definitely think this is a book that's better the second time you read it. That seemed to be the general consensus in my Jane Austen class as well that you appreciate it more the second time so I definitely think it's worth a read if you haven't read it yet but it's not my favorite out of Jane Austen's works. I think out of the three that I've read so far it's firm in the middle so you'll have to tune in to my reading every Jane Austen vlog to see my final rankings. I am planning to do a whole video ranking all of Jane Austen's works after I've read them all. So that's everything that I read in September. This video was a mess and I'm kind of glad it's over. I I, I don't know. <laughs> Words are hard today. I'm reading a lot of essays. I think my brain is fried and I'm also trying to get this done really quickly before my roommate comes back because it's really hard to get privacy when you live with three other people. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're still here at the end of the video, I'm proud of you because if I were you, I probably would have clicked off minutes ago because <laughs> Oh, this video was a disaster. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I swear I'm not usually like this. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. My social media links are down below if you want to follow me on Tumblr or Bookstagram or be my friend on Goodreads. Thank you so much and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Bye and I'll see you next time. And I just accidentally hit my sweatshirt. <laughs> Macbeth by <ooh. laughs> Mac the older sister Eleanor is much more sem. Uh, or, uh, El nah. <laughs> I just combined their names into one. As they navigate, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs>